Well, you know, that's a historic uh, series that went on for 25 years. Um, I had, after almost eight years at the Forum as director of promotions for the Lakers, the Kings, and all the Forum events, I had an office there, and the office next to mine was Don Frazier's office, who was the forum uh, boxing promoter and ma- matchmaker for Jack Ken Cook. I left after he won a championship, and I got a ring. There was no, you know, you in sports to get your championship ring. After we got the NBA ring with Matt with Magic's rookie year, a year later, I left to start my own company, and um, being the entrepreneurial person I am and having entrepreneurial eyes and ears, I picked up the uh, the broadcast rights to UC Irvine basketball. Was that, they, was that easy to pick up? Very easy. And no one could care less about UC Irvine basketball back in 1984, except they fired their coach and they hired this guy named Bill Mulligan. And this is another entrepreneurial story about seeing something in the paper, but looking through the ink on the paper and say, is there a business there? And because before I went to the forum, I was the sports information director at, at UCI. So I'm always interested. You know, once you work for somebody, you kind of interest them. And here I get up in the morning. Here's the Orange County Register and the Daily Pilot at that time was a, a, a daily. Said UC Irvine hires Bill Mulligan to be the new basketball coach. Nothing to me. But then I read the story. And it's Bill Mulligan had coached at Junior High in Long Beach, Milliken, Long Beach Poly, Riverside City, Saddleback. And it said he had never had a losing season, ever. I said, wait a minute. If this guy's never had a losing season, he's going to come to Irvine and win. And at that time, Irvine had a had their facility was Crawford Hall, which seats about 1,400. And I said, boy, if they start winning... They're not going to have enough seats in there. Um, so I said, they're going to sell out the place to students. So the only place they can follow this team would be on radio. So I go to the athletic director, Ray Thornton. I said, I'd like to buy your radio rights. No one had ever interested. So I said, I'll give you $500 for your radio rights. He said, yeah, okay, where do I sign? I got the rights. I found the station in San Clemente. 107.1 at that time was K-Surf, whatever. Hired two broadcasters. To make a long story short, Mulligan goes on to win 19 games. They have this All-American Kevin McGee. They get invited to the NIT, and students were sleeping out to get tickets. So the radio broadcast had a lot of followers on there. This leads us up to the boxing. So... In order to have the broadcast rights, and I'm paying for time and paying the announcers, I had to have sponsors. And the Irvine Marriott had just been built that year. So I said, and all the teams that were coming in were going to stay at the Irvine Marriott because that was the first really five-star hotel at the Orange County Airport. So I remember going there one day and said, uh, is there a the director of marketing or at the Irvine Marriott? And they said, yeah, there's a guy named Ed Perenza. So I go up there on my own. Meet Ed Prince, go in and say, hi, I'm here to sell. I'm, you know, I just got the broadcast rights for Irvine basketball. The teams are going to stay here. I'd like to sell you a sponsorship. But in my introduction, sitting down, I said I work in sports and I was with the Lakers and the Kings. And then out of the blue, he says, Has, is there any boxing in Orange County? Now, a, non, a non-entrepreneurial guy would have said no and got on to trying to sell him. But when he said that instantaneously, I said to myself, Ooh, why? That's interesting. So my answer was, no, but why are you asking? Which is the, to get him thinking. He said, well, I just came down here from the Portland Marriott, and there was a guy who wanted to do boxing in our ballroom, and we thought that was kind of silly. So on my own, I said to Ed, well, you know, a good friend of mine when I was at the farm is the boxing guy, Don Frazier. Would you do boxing? Would you be interested in boxing in the ballroom? Now, remember, this is a brand-new five-star hotel, the Irvine Marriott. Been what, open one month. What year are we talking about? This is 1985. Okay. Not 1984 at okay. that time. He said, well, I'll talk to my general manager, thinking that there's no way that a brand-new hotel is going to let boxing. I sold him sponsorship. I want to say a few days later, he called back and said, Roy, 
we'll give you the ballroom. Our, my general manager thinks that'd be a good idea. What I found out then, the general manager was a guy named Rod Cribben, who was a single guy, kind of a playboy, GM. He thought, boxing, I'll sit at ringside. I can bring my client, schmooze, bring a girlfriend. He thought that was cool. So I called Don Frazier, who lives in North Hollywood, who's an older guy. He said, Don, we got the Irvine Merritt brand new. We'll get a ball. They're going to give us the ballroom free. Well, boxing in a ballroom? No one's ever done that. And I'm not going to take a chance because he was the licensed promoter. I said, Don, it's a free. No, no, no. He finally said, well, if you, give, if you can get a $1,000 sponsorship, I'll be willing to take a chance. I went to Bud, Budweiser, Straub in Orange County, met the marketing guy. You're going to do what? Boxing? Nah, it's not going to work. I went to Consolidated, which is Miller. They said, you're going to do what? Boxing and the bomb? Nah, that won't go. There was a distributor in Irvine called Wisdom Imports that, that distributed to Cotty. And that's when the Cotty was brand new. The, they didn't have draft. You had to open the cans, and it tasted terrible, and you had, you know. Wait, wait, wait. So Ducati used to only be in cans? So Ducati was only in cans. There was not on draft or anything oh, like wow, that. Okay. Right. You okay. had a, right. So I said, if you give me $1,000, we'll pour Ducati. We'll give you seats. We'll put up signs and so forth. He calls back the next day. So you got the $1,000. I called Don. I said, Don, I got $1,000 from Ducati. He said, fine. We then... Opened up on February 17th, February 16th of 1985 at the Irvine Marriott. We didn't do any advertising. That's when columnists were big. John Hall, the Register of the Times, Alan Malamud. So Don Frazier, who was a boxing guy for years of the forum, got to all of his columnists, and they did stories about there's going to be boxing at the brand new Irvine Marriott. Whoever heard of that? And I was his operations guy setting up the room and marketing and selling the tickets. Going into that morning, and that's when we did the weigh-ins in the morning of the day of the show, we had we had put like 1,200 seats, all general admission, because we didn't know any, anybody was going to show up. We had sold to fighters about 400 seats. Again, to make a long story short, we turned away 200 people that night, sold out the ballroom. Now, another funny story is, this is 1985. There was nothing at database marketing, name capturing, or anything like that. But I remember, like at 2 o'clock that afternoon at 3, I said, God, if anybody shows up, shouldn't we, and I'm a PE major, why in the world this is what God has given me? I said, shouldn't we know who's here, get their name and address in case you want to do it again? What is PE major? PE, physical education. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I said, I'm going to go upstairs to the executive office, and I'm going to have run off some pieces of paper that say, if you'd like to be on our mailing list for now that future boxing shows, name and address. That's before there was emails. And you do that now, too. I do that. So I went upstairs, and back then they had a ditto machine, which it was kind of like a blue paper, and it had clear liquid. If you smelled it, you could get high on it. Hand so crank, hand right? crank it. Yeah. So I put three on a sheet, cut them, and put them on every seat. We turned away. And then we collected them. It was huge success. We came back the next month. We sent all our uh, names and addresses to a mailing house at the time. And then Dodd printed up a flyer and put them in an envelope and put a stamp on it because there was no emails back then. We sold out March. April, we sold out. We sold out the first two years. We did a show every month. Now, people ask me why we sold out. And it's one of the great stories with the greatest Muhammad Ali. And that, I'll tell you that story on the next podcast.